Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Caroline Makes Cards. I have five stenciling techniques to share with you today featuring Simonsis Stamps Fading Stencils. These are larger stencils designed for slimline cards, but of course they're perfectly adaptable to any size card. If you are on a card making budget like most of us, stencils are very budget friendly. Having a few techniques in your pocket increases their versatility. So let's get started. For several cards, I will be using Simonsis Stamp Slim Line Masks. The set comes with three different sizes of rectangles. I'm using the narrowest one for all of my cards. The stencils have etched frames for centering the rectangle. The panel measurements needed to fit this frame were jotted down for future reference. The stencil is secure on the cardstock by using a little bit of pixie spray, a repositionable adhesive. For my first card, I'm going to be working with fading circles, and I begin with the background using Distress Oxide inks, Walnut Stain, Brushed Corduroy, and Dried Marigold. A good choice of colors for a masculine encouragement card. For this tone-on-tone -tone technique, the very same colors used in the background will be used on the fading circles stencil. Again, I use some pixie spray so that my stencil will be secured to the cardstock. Because I've placed the stencil at a bit of an angle, there are some exposed areas at the top which I'm protecting with some post-it note tape. The stenciling will extend beyond the ink blended background into the white area of the card. The inks are applied in the same order as they are on the background. I work back and forth as I apply the different colors to my panel, much like I would as if I was ink blending, so that some of the circles will have a blend of both of the inks. Dried Marigold, the lightest tone, finishes off the top of the circle pattern. I found it difficult to get it deep enough to really show up on the ink blended background, so I ended up repositioning the stencil carefully and then applying a bit of the brushed corduroy and more of the dried marigold on top. I masked off the circles that extended into the white area so that I would be focusing the ink just on those circles that were on the ink blended background. The brush corduroy was applied with very light pressure. And then, as I mentioned before, I finished off with some more of the dried marigold. And that certainly seemed to do the trick and allowed those circles to be more visible. The stenciled panel was die cut with the second largest die in Pink Fresh Studios slim stitched rectangles. It was then mounted on white sheet foam. The panel would be mounted on Simon's Dark Chocolate cardstock, which was also die cut with the Pink Fresh dies using the largest one. A card base of Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock was size 3 and 3 quarter inches by 8 and 3 quarter inches. Simon's die set hugs was used for the sentiment. Dark chocolate cardstock and white sheet foam were die cut with the shadow die and stacked. The scripty hugs was die cut from matte gold cardstock. To add an element of shine to the card, it was finished off with lots of gold confetti topped with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. Using this simple jewel picker and Nouveau's precision glue makes this a very quick and easy undertaking. Because the remainder of the cards are all finished up in exactly the same way, I will be focusing on just the techniques used for stenciling. However, I will make mention of any materials that were used that were different. The stencil is adhered to the cardstock with pixie spray and placed inside a spatter box. 
I'm working with Distress Spray Stains, a pretty combination of Mermaid Lagoon and Cracked Pistachio. Although the colors intermingle across the panel, I do try to concentrate the blue Mermaid Lagoon at the bottom and the Cracked Pistachio at the top. This has the potential of being super messy. I was fortunate that I found a spatter box in my local craft store years ago, but a cardboard box would work just fine. I'm going to be using Simon's Picture Book Critters to build my underwater scene. Three small pieces of cardstock are going to be sprayed with distress stain that I will use for die cutting. The paint will be applied lightly. This first panel is done with the same colors as the background. The second panel is sprayed with a combination of Mermaid Lagoon and Sketched Blueprint. Crushed Olive and Twisted Citron are used on the last panel. The cardstock that I'm using for all of the cards is Bristol Smooth. Not only is it the perfect choice for ink blending, it can withstand a certain amount of moisture, so it is a good choice for the techniques that I'm using today. Distress stains can take a while to dry, particularly if there's any pooling of the ink. I let them sit for a couple of hours, but just in case, I always take a piece of paper towel and lay it flat on top and take up any excess ink. I wanted to add some additional texture for the animals. I'm using gouache paint and a fan brush to apply the paint in a crosshatch fashion. To maintain the brush lines, no water is added to the gouache. This is a dry brush technique. And now back to the background. The stencil is still tacky from the pixie spray and it is repositioned back over the circles. For a little bit of shine, I'm going to be layering on Gina Kay's Iridescence Glitz Glitter Gel, and that is a mouthful. I'm using a great tool by Tonic Studios called a Media Spatula. This comes in a set of two. One is straight and the one I'm using is angled. The spatulas have the perfect amount of flexibility to easily apply gels and texture paste. I'm doing my best to try to maintain the texture from the distress stain. So first I apply the gel by kind of pouncing it on and then once I have a layer on then I do a pull across the panel. So now back to the spatter box. I want my spatter to be relatively fine, so I use a small brush and apply both the Mermaid Lagoon and the Cracked Pistachio Stain to the panel. I finish up with lots of white gouache spatter that has been watered down just slightly. I love the additional texture that the gouache provides. Next, I decide what color the picture book die critters are going to be. I'm working with the turtle, the octopus, fish, and the seahorse. As I die cut each animal, I keep its various pieces together, including the little dot eyes, which I will be putting in place because I know if I don't, and I apply the Black Nouveau Drops, which is my plan, they will dimple in the hole. I find it easiest for me to die cut a couple of the animals at a time and put them together. All of the critters will be mounted on white sheet foam. The only exception is the back legs of the octopus and the spine of the seahorse. The main sentiment for this card summer is from Simon Says Stamps Four Seasons. To mount it on foam, I leave it intact, removing just the center pieces of some of the letters that I'll use as registration marks. After applying the glue to the foam, the die cut is popped in place. The depressions in the foam make this easy to do. I use my craft pick in the die cut holes just to make any final adjustments and then it is set aside to set up. 
The main die cut of the octopus is also mounted on foam. The jewel picker is used to pick up those little bitty eyes and set them in place. I continue in this fashion, building the die cut animal pieces onto foam. I wait several minutes and then I use my craft pick to help release the foam backed animals from the backing. Once the legs are tacked onto the back of the octopus, that's one down and several more to go. The turtle shell was die cut out of both the green and the blue stained paper. Putting the blue circles on the shell just added a little bit of visual interest. Because the picture book dies do not come with a background to build the animal on, it can be quite challenging for some of them to put together, particularly for those animals that are literally in pieces. I find that cutting them out of foam first can make a big difference in the ease of putting them together. The fish is one of those dies. If I make just one pass on the die cutter, the fish will stay intact for the most part. I did have a couple of pieces that came off of the foam die cut and I glued it back on and let it set up. It just made it a lot easier to piece it together on a background. The secondary sentiment for this card was borrowed from an older stamp set by Simon called Be a Mermaid. It was stamped with black Versafine ink and clear embossed. This is a good way to get that black embossed look without having to deal with black speckles where you don't want them. I'm using a die from Simon's Sentiment Label set so that I can get a nice straight sentiment which I mount on foam. While I let that dry for a while before I trim it down, I go ahead and start putting the elements on the card, starting with the primary sentiment summer, making sure that I leave room for the sentiment strip. bit of drying time ensures that when I cut that foam it's not going to slip and come out of alignment. I just received a beautiful new sequin mix by Simon Says Stamp called Sea Glass and the colors are just perfect for this card. I store my sequins in bead storage boxes. I never looked forward to transferring them over to their storage containers because I always had a mess and was constantly dealing with static until I discovered the coffee filter. Just like embossing powder, it slips into the container, no static, no mess. The eyes of the critters are dotted with black nouveau drops. And then I finish up the sequins as I always do with morning dew. And this card is done. Stenciling technique for this card uses heat embossing. Distress Oxide Ink Victorian Velvet covers the entire panel. When the background is nice and smooth, I put the slimline mask on it. Starting at the bottom, I ink blend this rectangle with hickory smoke, pumice stone, and finish off with sponge sugar. I'm going to be heat embossing, so it's time to take a break from the craft room and let this panel completely dry. And let me add just one thing, I never get tired of the reveal. Before touching any ink to that panel, I make sure that it's completely dry by putting embossing powder on a corner and making sure it will knock off cleanly. Before the stencil was put in place, anti-static powder was applied to the panel. Versamark is applied to the Fading Heart stencil with a blending tool. It is not at all like applying Distress Oxide ink. You almost have to use a little bit of a pouncing motion with a slight twist to it. Versamark is slow drying. You have lots of time to ensure that each heart has good ink coverage. 
When you remove the stencil, you'll see how good of a job you have done. If you're not happy, you can carefully realign the stencil and apply more ink. I created my own embossing powder mix for this card. I used equal parts of pink and silver metallic embossing powder and clear glitter. Before applying heat to the panel, I made sure that the heat tool had come to its maximum heat. There's lots of embossing and I want to minimize warping. And into the spatter box it goes for some spattering using Distress Stain Brush Pewter. Yep, I didn't film it. This foam back panel was mounted on Simon's slate cardstock. I used a beautiful new die set called The World Needs for the Sentiment. The shadow die was used to cut silver foil cardstock and foam. The sentiment was cut from Simon's cotton candy cardstock. I was careful adhering the sentiment to avoid any glue smearing on the foil, which is hard to get rid of. The card was finished off with silver confetti topped with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. I ended up with two cards for the crackle glaze technique. While making the first card, apparently I like to have a static video of my ceiling. But no worries, this is a fast and easy card to make. And it's pretty, so why wouldn't I want to? For this card, I began by ink blending the rectangle using pumice stone, bundled sage, and peacock feathers. I used dusty concord, hickory smoke, and black soot for the first card. After die cutting the panel, it is ready to be stenciled. When using Pixie Spray, the stencil will stay tacky and can be reused a couple of times. I simply have to lay my stencil on top of my panel and I'm ready to go. I use Tonic Studio Spatula to apply Nouveau Crackle Glaze Mousse over the stencil. The entire panel is stenciled, including the white area. Once I have a good coverage of the mousse, I use long sweeping motions from top to bottom of the panel to smooth it all out. And now my favorite part, the reveal. The fading floral stencil is just gorgeous. The panels warp when you apply the crackle mousse to them. For the card done with Dusty Concord, I used glue to attach it to the foam backing. I weighted it down overnight with a stack of books and even then it wasn't perfectly flat. So here is the silver lining of having to redo your card. I got to try something else out. I reached for the mother of all adhesives, my Suk Wang double-sided tape. I knew I had to cover every bit of the panel, and so I had a wide roll which I used three strips off, and then I finished off with a quarter inch strip. This tape can be pretty unforgiving, so I only removed two of the backing strips before I line up my panel on the foam. Once the panel is lined up and secured, I use my craft pick to reach under the panel and remove the other two backing strips. I still had to put it under some heavy weight, but the result was perfection. I applied ink to Bristol Smooth so that I could die cut the sentiments. For one card I used Peacock Feathers and for the other the Dusty Concord. Simon's hand-lettered Happy Birthday, a very delicate die cut, was cut three times for each card. Tombow glue was applied, they were left to dry until tacky, and then stacked. Even though it is a fine die cut, it is compact and so it is very easy to stack. Because it has tacky Tombow glue on it, I simply set it down on the card and then trim off the tail ends.
parts were finished off with lots of clear confetti topped with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. For my last card, I'm going to be colouring with daubers and Distress Oxide inks. I'll be working with Squeeze Lemonade for the centre of the flowers. The petals will be done in Abandoned Coral and Picked Raspberry and the leaves with peeled paint and shabby shutters. I begin by dabbing the squeeze lemonade in the center of each of the flowers. As I proceed with my coloring of the petals and the leaves, I use pieces of post-it note tape to protect areas so that I can concentrate the ink exactly where I want it to go. I begin at the base of the petal applying abandoned coral and then finish off with picked raspberry. The strips of post-it note are moved around the panel and I'm able to focus on two petals at a time. The masking really keeps that ink focused on where you want it. A couple of times I somehow managed to catch the abandoned coral on the center of the flower. I just reapplied the squeeze lemonade and you would never have known it. These inks really do have great coverage. Inking up the flower petals did take a bit of time. However, when I moved on to the leaves, that went very quickly. Relatively speaking, that is. The darker green was focused at the base of the leaves and worked out towards the softer one. Simon's Happy Birthday Brush Script was die cut from white glitter paper and stacked on a foam die cut. After the sentiment was adhered to the card, it was finished off with lots of clear confetti topped with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. And that wraps up the six cards looking at different techniques that we can use to extend the use of our stencils featuring Simon Says Stamps Fading Stencils series. As always, I appreciate your visit.